You are listening to the Savage Fincast, episode 49, Barry's Wild and Crazy Weekend. Chicago. A criminal mastermind called Overlord held our city in his terrifying grip. Ordinary cops were losing the battle against Overlord's super freaks and mutants. Then, a miracle happened. When I found him, he had no memory of his past. I helped him find an identity and a life. Now we have a fighting chance. Now we have the dragon. This is the Savage Fincast, a show that's never afraid to do it twice. I am Jim Purcell. I'm Craig Olson. And I'm Raven Perez. And we're coming at you with a brand new episode. Uh, we will be, in the future, be talking about the latest issue of Savage Dragon, issue 214, among other things. No spawn all yet. Things, this is all things Savage Dragon related. No spawn, though. This this podcast comes pretty quick on the heels of our last uh, one with our Eric interview, so we talked about a lot, and a new Savage Dragon issue came out in the meantime, but... I think Spawn is probably next week, I want to say. Does that sound right? Well, yes. yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, Spawn's on next week from this, this recording. which From this recording, <laughs> which we're doing in the future, which is somehow right. also in the past. It's best not to think about it. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to Spawn eventually, we promise. So uh, should we jump into the news? Let's get the news, boys. Uh, it's a real short news uh, uh I wouldn't say week because who knows how long the, between podcasts. But a uh, little bit of news that we have is uh, Eric Larson is going to be at the Paris Comic Con October 21st through the 23rd of this year. So uh, I don't know how many listeners we have overseas. I know he has quite a following in Europe. At least um, one. Yeah. Who's uh, Gavin? Uh, well, Gavin. I, I was we thinking, got thinking of my friend Thor's- Zach, actually. So two, that's two. Uh, got- so for, for listeners, Gavin Higginbotham, who's the editor, and then uh, who who's that? One of your friends? Yeah, it's, uh, Zach. Uh, um, shoot, Zach Hawk, Zach Hawkins, who uh, came on to do. Uh, I made him a Savage Dragon fan. Is what I'm getting at. Oh yeah, yeah. so was, that was one of the guys that it was me. Did I did it all. <laughs> So he he's uh, been picking it up. Yeah, yeah, he he loves it. That's cool. He's been buying the archives got, like they're going out of. St- I know there's a few guys in Germany. I think we got uh, Thorsten. We got Stefan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know how like I have no. I, I'm an idiot when it comes to kind of like uh, like where's Paris? Well, I know where Paris is, but I'm saying like, you know, for those in Europe, you know, it's a good chance to go see Eric since he. It's not always over there, but I don't know how far from like it, the Netherlands, like pa- you know what I mean. Well, is it easy to pretty, get to? Or Netherlands is pretty is far, it, but the way Europe works, you just hop a train, you can basically get anywhere. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's absolute, but, you know, it, cake. I'm wondering if it's like telling a guy like me from Philly, it's go, oh, Eric's going to be in Austin, Texas. You know, it's a good chance to go see him. Can't and, hop a train to Austin, Texas because <laughs> right, our right. train system is garbage. Yeah. So it is, a, you know, for for you Europe people, it's a good chance to go see him. <laughs> Europe people, Europe <laughs> peopleians. Yeah, that works. That's good. I'm down with it. Uh, so that that's about it on the Eric news front. It's good that he's going to Europe, though. I, 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 I it was my understanding he wasn't doing a lot of cons this year. Mm-hmm. So being able to get him out, you know, on the other side of the world is nice. I think he what wasn't he in France a few years ago? Yeah, well, I think he did him. What was it, a British trip? Maybe it was France. It was definitely Europe. But he, yeah, we had him yeah. on just after. Yeah, yeah. Think how cool it is just to get to see like somebody who you're a fan of, who you know lives on a whole other continent. I mean, the internet has made everyone you know feel like the world's all shrunk and small. But still, like when you think about the logistics of like, there's places and people that I want to meet and see. I'll probably never see. Like, is the truth? <laughs> it's like. Mm. You know, I'll probably never, you know, go to a con and see some manga guy you, that I you like. You and me, Raven. We're going to Boston. Don't forget. <laughs> I, I never have. I, I got that. It's, that's hardwired. Boston's not Europe. <laughs> <laughs> I can day trip it there. If I could day trip it to Europe, I would. But 
Well, hey, Rand, it's cool. Depends I'm glad how much for money people. you got. <laughs> I don't roll like that, Purcell. I do not. <laughs> I can't look at a picture of Europe on any given day. <laughs> So yeah, so, that, that's ex- that's that's exciting news, especially for any European fans of Eric, which I'm sure there are many because I'm sure Spider Man got a lot of play over there, and Dragon, of course, and Image in general. Should be fun for him, lucky bastard. <laughs> the other piece of news is a lot more somber. Yes, I'm afraid um, this is not really Savage Dragon related, as I do not believe he was ever involved in anything Eric Larson related directly. Um, but. Uh, today, actually, this morning, uh, comic book writer, artist, uh, Darwin Cook passed away. Uh, today th- being May 14th. 14th. Uh, apparently, he had a very vicious and very short, well, I don't know, actually, I, we don't know the details, but it was very, it, it, as news, it came very, very quickly. We were told yesterday that he was uh, dying of cancer, he, he sorry that he was um, battling cancer and that he was in the final stages and his passing came in the night. So it was very sudden for the fans. Oh, yeah. It was very fast. Uh, no, who, yeah, who knows how long I, I he's been no fighting idea. it, you know, in the background, not, you know, announcing it, being a very private person, I assume. Right. But but his passing was sudden. Yeah, he's he's a he's a major player. I mean, he's one of those guys that was a true cartoonist who oh, could write yeah. and draw. Um, he single-handedly made me a DC fan. Uh, I think back in With, the early 2000s when I was getting into comics heavily, his his New Frontier series, well, I read issue by issue as they came out and what he did in those pages really clicked with me in that whole kind of like Space Age, Silver Age, over the top sort of DC style. Yeah, it, it, it was the first guy that really made guys like Green Lantern and Flash and Adam Strange and the Challengers of the Unknown really click with me. That's funny that you say that because I have I collect a lot of hardcovers. I collect a lot of the omnibuses and stuff like that, and I have pretty much a huge Kirby collection, but it's all Marvel. And then all my other hardcovers are either Marvel or Image or Independent. And the only thing DC-related I have is Kirby and The New Frontier because that, that collection is so so good. You have the Absolute Collection? Yeah. I also yeah. have that. I bought that 10 years ago now. I think it was like re- – I got really cheap in a sale somewhere for like 30 bucks. Yeah, and- it's the only DC – like oversized hardcover collection I have yeah. that's not like a Jack Kirby book. It's, it's definitely the only absolute edition I ever shelled up the cash for because I don't know, it just it just it, it just clicked with me so much I wanted to own it in a hard copy like that. Yeah. Oh. I think it was like that for a lot of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh that was his breakout like I mean he's always good in doing things, but that was like one of his like most breakout things. Yeah. As I understand it, he had a, a pretty well regarded run on Catwoman previously which sort of oh, yeah which sort of springboarded this uh, i mean uh, new frontier i think and after that he basically became a really hot commodity uh his his catwoman design was the one with the goggles and the whip belt yeah like the goggle glasses and the whip belt and uh it, it's funny because like i always bash and pick on corporate comics but like i will totally follow an artist to a character that i don't care about just because i like the artist and I was reading his Catwoman stuff for a hot minute just because it was just so good. Like, yeah, it was yeah, awesome. Yeah. And that's right. He did, a, he did a spirit revival after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he really got it. You know, he got the look and the feel. I think that's what's most unfortunate is that as good as he is, he mostly dealt with other people's characters. He never really wrote his own thing. Well, I mean, he wrote his own stuff. Oh, yeah, he, was, he, he wrote, wrote but yeah. he was always play, playing with somebody else's toys. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he was really yeah. good at it, but the, even the even like even like this year, surprisingly, he had a series, a mini series from Vertigo. Uh, I think it was called uh, Twilight Children. Mm-hmm. Even that was written by Gilbert Hernandez, the guy who does Love and Rockets. Okay, yeah. which I really need to read now that I oh, know yeah. it's only four issues long. And he's got yeah. his Parker series, which was uh, of course based on a book Richard series. Stark. Yeah, yeah, Richard Stark's book series, which I've only read the first volume of. If you like film noir at all, it's like really good for that. 
And, and the art is just spectacular. Of course. In that, just using like one shade of color. And... It's just really irritating because and sad because he, he was such a talent. And to just be struck down by cancer at like randomly is just absolutely infuriating. Well, it, it's shocking because we it gave us a day to kind of process it, and then he was gone. Yeah. Oh and, yeah. And he was such a powerhouse, you know. The stuff he put out was just, you know, stuff you had to buy and had to read. I mean, I've, I mean, as you get older, your your favorite creators start passing away. I mean, Terry Pratchett left left like two or three years ago now. Or even a year ago, but he had like a slow decline with Alzheimer's, so you had time to like accept that he was going to be gone. So, well, and and Darwin's Cook is a relatively young guy, you know what I mean? It's no, I think he was like yeah, he's about, like fifty something. We're not talking about these, you know, guys out there that are in their eighties that were around, you know, yeah, sixties, seventies, and stuff like that that are, you know, keep waiting for like Stan Lee to drop, and he keeps going. No, never that's, will. that's a horrible thing to say, dude. He never, he <laughs> never nothing will. against him. He's just, he's just one of those people who just hangs around forever. It's like a <laughs> hundred. Everything you say just sounds worse. <laughs> <laughs> he's just really old, you see. And, and I'm laughing. <laughs> uh, no, I get, I get what you mean. It, it's always shocking whenever somebody you, who is so young. You know, and young in the industry, and like has like still such a huge impact and a like killer body of work. Yeah, and he he got into the industry like really late in his life. I mean, he he, he apparently is like his first published thing was like in eighty five, and he didn't become big until the mid two thousands. Yeah, yeah, that feels about right. Crazy. It's, yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, I don't know. Like I said, it's just a damn shame. Yeah. Um, I wish that I had read more of his stuff when he was alive. Like I just like always liked his art, but like you said, like he worked so much on like things I don't read. Yeah, he just yeah. he's just such a clean style, and he and he he did the widescreen thing without being like widescreen. It's hard to explain because the way New Frontier is, it's like a six panel grid except it's not. It's actually a three panel grid stacked on top of each other and he breaks it up as needed but it's very rigid like Watchmen. Yeah. Yeah. So he he he, he was just his understanding of like space on a page is just phenomenal. Yeah, I agree. And it, just his understanding of like how to draw a good costume like you were saying raven with a catwoman costume and how to like you know even though with like new frontier they're kind of like the old school costumes he just made them look cool yeah he, he got mm-hmm. those classic designs just right you saw that you know when you read the new frontier it's like that's the costumes i want to see even the modern comics like the characters wearing it just looks good you know well you know and even larson touched on that when he was talking about you know he's like these costumes if they're drawn a certain way, don't have to be perverse. He was like, you know, these designs, like a lot of people are like, oh, the designs need updated. Oh, the designs are outdated. No, like you see these designs in the hands of someone like Darwin Cook, who knew like how to render these guys and these costumes where they don't look cheesy and they don't look shitty and they don't look overly sexualized. They just look iconic. Yeah. They're clean. They're clean lines. There's not too much going on and it portrays what it needs to portray uh, he, so, he once said he had one rule about wonder woman is that she's always taller than superman i, I love who that. said that dharma cook he always oh, really? drew wonder woman taller than superman that's cool just a good just good clean and like clean work is incredibly hard like if you do um any kind of artwork or whatever the scritchy scratchy cartooning people like it more but it, it's kind of like, you know, like the old uh, Otley versus um, Cory Walker debate where people are like, oh, I don't like this art. And it's like you have no idea how hard it is to make clean art look good. Like it is so hard to make clean, yeah, simple yeah. cartooning look that, amazing. I, without any I enjoy it all, without any like yeah. any cover anything up. Yeah. I, I enjoy guys that can do that, like Cook and like Bruce Tim is amazing. Uh, Cook, Cook, what's his name? Cook, Cook uh, worked a lot on uh, the DC animation pro- stuff. Yeah, that, that, yeah, I think that's where he mostly got you know into DC. He, he, that's how he got in the door was by doing like working with Bruce Tim and Co on those productions as a storyboard artist. You know the other guy, and 
can't remember his name right now. Uh, the guy that does Powers is kind of oh like that. Uh, Omeg. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah, his yeah. stuff too. I, I think you know, it's simple. You know, it conveys the action, everything well. It's I just I enjoy it, that. His, his art's like gotten a lot rougher over time. Oh really? Yeah, he's evolved like Eric has, where where it used to be like super clean, but things are like a lot more like rendered now. Well, not not hashing. It's just. Uh, I feel like Eric's gone in the opposite direction. He's a lot looser. Yeah. Is that how Oming is now? I think so. Is that what you're saying? He's looser? Yeah, last time I really looked at it. Yeah, it's weird. Savage Dragon has, like, taken a super, like, cross-hatchy detailed look lately. Like, it was going, like, kind of, like, uh, more Kirby-esque and, like, these last, like, you know, what, Malcolm years, since he went two up, it's been, like, Crazy cross hatching look everywhere, which I like that too. You know, that's awesome as shit too. Yeah, yeah. So, um, should we get into our interesting conversation segment? We, sh- we should. Yeah. All right. Well, this is our interesting conversation segment. It's a segment where we typically pose a selected listener question related to Eric Larson or Savage Dragon to but- our group, and we have a roundtable discussion about it. Uh, what were you gonna say, Jim? Uh, unfortunately, it's a little difficult when you didn't get any fa- any 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 questions for that previous episode. <laughs> well, we, obviously, we we uh, well, it might not be obviously, but, but uh, we just did a uh, fin cast with Eric, which wasn't too long ago. So it wasn't the the normal one where we we did a fin interesting conversation, didn't ask for questions. So with the uh, this round, I'm gonna pose my own question, and uh, I'm gonna award myself. A t-shirt. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, man. Um, I'll send you Sailor, <laughs> Sailor Moon coming up. Uh, no, uh, but for, for this uh, for this segment, uh, I'm going to pose a question to the group. And my question is, or uh, more like a statement is, I want to see if you guys can name uh, one or two unresolved uh, plots or other story details that weren't kind of uh, explained that you wish were addressed in Savage Dragon. The seeker. Period. Full stop. <laughs> That's true. He so was. for listeners, what the seeker came out like right after the Savage World. He was a guy on the glider, but the I want to say the weird the... kind of armored guy. Yeah, he had a very cool design, but he, he apparently all he did was harass Dragon. I want to say the very last time we saw him was during the quote unquote family era when uh, Dragon was standing in for Santa Claus. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the last time and he we was, saw him. He was like totally hunting dragon Is, for quite a few issues, wasn't it? Or at least one or two. I think it's probably two. more. I'm probably thinking more in my head, but it probably was only like one or two. Yeah, I, I think he only had like two or three appearances total. But it was never explained why or like <laughs> what was going on. Yeah, he just disappeared. That's that's a good one. That's a good one. I, I, that's a I great. I feel like it. it's the only major one still dangling out there these days. I can't. Well, remember. the other we, we talked about the other major one was the Johnson twins. Like, that's, what's that's not really a. That it was never like teased to be anything more than what it was. One of them was ugly, but there. That's it. Yeah, but it happened while. Dragon was possessing William Johnson is when Rita got pregnant. I guess I just I never I'll take that. I never read too much into that. No, I, I can I could see that being something because you know why you know yeah I could see that. Some people are born ugly. Well, yeah. and I'm pretty sure that Eric said when he was doing Paul Dragon, he had Paul Dragon like before Savage Dragon when, when Eric was young. Paul Dragon had two like twins. One was oh. like kind of, and one was. Well, that kind of so. makes sense since um. Well, Paul Paul Dragon wasn't the. Uh, it's not canon. Not, well, not no, he's not the Johnson Dragon. So they're two different dragons. So. Yeah. But he decided to pull that thread in with the the Johnson twins. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And and again, so it was just it was a weird thing, and it's always kind of been hinted that it had something to do with Dragon possessing. Uh, William Johnson. Maybe he'll turn green and grow a fin, since now we have precedent for that. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Like yeah, he could get a blood transfusion and just it, it would it would take instead of making him explode. Like you yeah, know how like yeah. people get the dragon blood transfusion and they just fucking explode. 
Like he might get it and like be okay. Yeah, yeah. I hear that. That'd be cool. I got one, sure. and I can't believe yeah. you guys didn't mention it. Hoodie Dark Lord. What? Oh, right. I guess that just, is. A, I guess it is. A, just, I just keep assuming that that thread's going to come back sooner rather than later. It's not like the Seeker, who I don't expect to ever see again. It's just killing me. It's been a while. Yeah. You think yeah. about Dragon went to jail when Hoodie Dark Hoodie Dark Lord gave Dragon. How long has Dragon been in jail? That's how old that is. It's been a few years, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, that was right after he came back from space. Yeah. He went to the uh, Vanguard's planet and then, like, saw everything all jacked up. It was like, here, you Krillians, live here. And oh, then, good luck with that. Yeah. And then Hoodie Dark Lord was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll hit you a ride back to Earth. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I just blew you up, like, six issues ago. It's fine. And it's just the weirdest thing because, you know... We've never seen, like, young Dark Lord. We've seen multiple Dark Lords, right? We've never yeah. seen, like, this young... And why is young? And what are his, why is he young? And well, what he, are his plans? He's and... young because he's the same kid Dark Lord we saw back in issues 100, 1, 2, and 3. Is he? Yeah. He's the one from Malcolm's original universe. I mean, that's the... Mm, that's, I, that's the I thought they stated that he died. Like, yeah, he I thought he got his neck brains. burned. He's... The one, yeah, he, I, I've, he I've been assuming brains. that right along because they're the same age. You see, it is a long running plot thread. But there's <laughs> dark lords that are like coming in and out of different uh, realities and stuff like that. Right. And they're collecting. But I assumed it's that one because it's not the Savage World one because that one is definitely dead. Uh, maybe. Because that one, see? that one sacrificed himself to transfer Dragon into the Savage World to save the other one, quote unquote. Hmm. So I, I just want to know his story, bros. I just want to yeah, know his story. It's funny, Rave. I had that written down. I just I put Damien Dark Lord more behind <laughs> the. I want to see more behind the scenes. Is he good or bad? Like, let's finalize mm-hmm. this. You know, let's ambiguous. Yeah. yeah. Plus, another thing. Well, I mean, just generically, I, you could just bump it up from Damien Dark Lord and just say, like, just Dark Lord. Period. Because the thing that's interesting is, so Dark Lord says to dragon at one point like you're always the wild card you're always the x factor and it's like okay well how's that like relate to malcolm now like malcolm's the lead is it like is this a world now that's like ripe for the picking because dragons are like a fucking old man yeah like what's going down you see what i'm saying i see i'm interested he's curious if he's talking about dragon himself or chosen ones in general to me, I'm just like to me that's like a plot thread that's out there like you got mr multiple universe guy there's no reason to believe he's not still out there, like just executing his plan. He wasn't really taken. It's not like all the Dark Lords were rounded up in a big warehouse and blown up. So, <laughs> I don't know. Probably very it's difficult cool. to accomplish when there's infinite number of them. I would like that. That's my plot thread. Damien Dark Lord. Let's put a put a pin in that balloon. He was the seeker all one. along. I wanted to know more about Death Seed too. Remember that guy from Dimension X? He seemed like he was going to be an awesome kind of a nihilist type character. Wait, didn't he, he kind of, like? Really... Didn't Jennifer beat him to death? No, that was uh, Reed Richards who. Uh, no. The purple guy. No, no, no. That no, that, that was no, Alex. No. That's right. Right. Death Seed threatened Angel. So. Oh Jennifer yeah, you're right. Yeah, death. yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I just wanted to know more about it. Like, he seemed like, like, what's going on with Dimension X? And, like, remember he had a little henchman, and he just kind of came out of nowhere. I, th- I think he was just sort of to be, like, the Annihilus type character. That was, like, yeah. the point. Um, I think because uh, Mr. Glum basically took over that role as, like, King God Dick of Dimension X. <laughs> King God Dick. <laughs> That's going to be Trump's new title when he wins. <laughs> he's gonna dissolve the name president of the United States, and he's gonna change it officially to King God Dick <laughs> of the world. <laughs> Murder. It's gonna be. It's gonna be huge. I can't wait. Can't wait. Maybe you'll get some new hair. It's all good. Ah, Trump humor. Well, I think that was good. You guys have anything? Uh. Any other pressing uh, unresolved plots, or do we hit? What I, I mean, none, we need none to that don't seem like they're going to get resolved fairly soon. I mean, sure. just speaking of unresolved plot threads getting resolved, 
Savage mm. Dragon 214 ties one up quite in a neat bow. Oh, <laughs> uh, you think? Maybe. Well, hold that thought. We got we got one uh, we la- listener have- letter. But I just wanted to say, uh, for the next episode, remember, send your questions and opinions to savagefincast at gmail.com. If your entry is selected as a new question for a interesting conversation, you'll win a limited edition T-shirt designed by Raven. So we have two uh, this keep, year. Uh, yeah, we got the Sailor Moon. Uh, <laughs> what would you call it? An homage or not really? Homage. What is it? Maxine, homage. magical girl Maxine. And uh, uh, what's the other one? Thunderhead. The Thunderhead. Thunderhead. Th- Thunderhead one's really cool. I like that one. Well, thank you. Uh, I like them look, both. But look badass on a T-shirt. That's for sure. So, uh, everyone who submits their opinion, uh, will, uh, you know, we'll pick one person and we'll read their question. We'll probably read more than one if they're good, but, uh, we'll get one winner and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it on the FinCast and you'll be famous. It'll be great. <laughs> Let me just throw this out there. A lot of times people like private message me and they'll be like, well, I sent one and you didn't choose it. And it's like, here's the thing. No rules. Send it. Send again. Send, send a different again. one. Send yeah, right. three. Like there's no limit. Like send it again, because we're not so organized that we keep all the requests and just like dip back into them. Like we just check yeah, the we just chuck them in the trash it. after the after the after the month goes by. Yeah. So just send it again. It might not be that we didn't like your topic. We're it just might... assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, it just might be that, like, there was just one that, like, for in- here's a for instance, like, all three of us might have known a lot, been able to react all three better to a topic than, like, another topic. And so just because, like, one month, think about it, like, the people who, like, send in things like, ah, you know, I didn't get it and didn't try, this would have been a primo month. Anything would have won. Yeah, anything. Anything, so yeah, send whatever. You I mean, got. anything send one stuff. last time too, because uh, the only time we'd ever talk about Judge Dredd is if uh, it was just me and Raven. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there you go. So yeah, I mean, it never hurts to try. Um, anything is better than nothing, and like the odds of you getting or uh, winning something are pretty good, actually. So <laughs> uh, on the fin mail. We got some Finn mail. Hey, um, would Fa- would Fonte and Cadaver's rivalry be like an unfinished plot thread? You think? I feel like no. Yeah, I'd say no. But do you guys? Do you agree? I would like to know more about them. Yeah. I would like to see them come back or something. Well, f- f- unfortunately, Fonte told Dragon he'd never see him again. So. Bingo. Yeah. That was in the other universe. No, that was um, that was damn it. That was in the backup in issue one hundred, after the possession arc went went out the way although i guess right. I, I guess he told alternate universe dragon so maybe that doesn't count oh good point yeah he told alternate universe dragon who would die soon after so, that's mm-hmm. a fantastic point yeah that's actually not confirmed in normal dragon plus we are in a new universe yeah so technically who knows fonte could come rolling in there i would be okay with seeing him and abner cadaver again I feel bad for any like listeners that are kind of recent readers of Dragon. Sometimes when you go back and you're just like, we're just like Fonty and I, I, Abner Cadaver, and they see like what? For some reason, I strangely retain these bits of info from backups and shit. There's always the Savage Dragon wiki too. Just oh, Google yeah. it, and you could look up all these characters. Also, um, new listeners, it's not super important that you know everything because, like, this does all pertain to Malcolm's dad, not Malcolm. So it's not overly critical. But, yeah. Get familiar with the wiki. It's awesome. So the uh, fan mail that we have from our good friend Sotiris Gravis. Familiar name. uh, Very uh, eloquent, well-spoken. says... Fincast crew, greetings, gents. Allow me to congratulate you guys on that whole 50th quotation episode thing. I'm one of the multitude of fans out there, that horde of five or six listeners who tune in regularly. Actually, I'm sure it's more than that. Uh, Editor's sidebar, it may not be. Mm. Uh, (laughs) In fact, be less. 
It might be three. Like me, Craig, and Jim, and then let's see. No, I'm kidding. Uh, who genuinely enjoy your collaborative efforts. Pretty soon, you'll be celebrating your fifth year anniversary, which coincides with Savage Dragons and Image Comics' quarter century anniversary. Way to go. Coincidence. We planned it that way, just to keep it even. Um, the letter continues, what I like most about your podcast is its laid back tone. It doesn't come across as some dry academic discourse. It's fun. I dare say it's funny. The kind of funny actor Joe Pesci won't get upset about. All your personalities mesh real well together, including your esteemed and exalted guest, Eric Larson. The fact that he makes himself so available like that without having to twist his arm is pretty cool. Please don't ever get rid of the expletives. I love me some swearing. It adds to that carefree candor, which I thoroughly enjoy. People tend to swear like a sailor and fishmonger's wife when they're being honest and not trying to censor themselves. One of the many virtues associated with anything nautical or maritime related. As an aside, don't forget to send me that shirt, Raven. It's exactly what my wardrobe was missing. Ta-ta for now. Sincerely, Soteris Gravis. P.S. I applaud the audio quality of your shows. A ringing endorsement, unlike some other podcasts where I'm left with a ringing in my ears. P.P.S. While we're on the subject of rings, why don't Malcolm and Maxine wear wedding bands? I guess Larson is averse to drawing them. Huh. I hadn't thought of that. Mm, good question. He, he used to draw it all the time on Dragon. It's true, he did. He made a point of it a lot. Man, that must have been a I... huge fucking ring. Wedding band. <laughs> it's a cock ring. You can't even wear it now. Jesus. It's more like a, it's more like a bracelet. <laughs> Old dick fingers. Do we, do we swear a lot? Well, I like we, we can swear a lot because iTunes decided we are an explicit uh, content. So, you know, whatever. Did they? Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of what they do. Hmm. I do. I apologize. If anybody hates it, I just can't help it. I got it from my I don't mom. feel like we do that much. Maybe I swear do. a lot, although I do try to use it for humorous moments when I'm deadpanning. <laughs> It's calculated <laughs> for maximum effect. I agree with Satiris. I think if you're passionate, you're going to let it rip. I, I won't name drop what I was listening to, but like um, there was this podcast where they used to be part of a more professional type thing and then it all dissolved and then they just started doing their own thing on YouTube and they cuss a lot more on YouTube. Is it paper and... keg? No, no, no. Oh. It just makes me feel more like at ease with – a person I feel you know what's funny is I don't drink and I feel like the look people give me when I say I don't drink is the same way I feel about people when they don't swear you don't drink. I'm giving you that look right now I'm surprised I know as, as, I know. A, as an artist the Isn't minute being an alcoholic like a rule that's writers oh only I'm giving you a huge I suppose stink straight eye. lines do need more <laughs> court coordination when you say you don't drink, people instantly look at you like you're a narc or something. What do you mean you don't drink? Don't you don't don't drink, or you just don't drink often? Teetotaler, don't oh, touch it. Jesus, thing. it's only because. And yeah, like going to Cancun, that shit was crazy. Like there was alcohol. There's nothing there was to do. You could get alcohol easier than you could get water. I was like, and then on you're a... just hanging around with drunk people, and you're just like, ah, oh, these people are idiots. Dude, you just have fun with them. You just gotta mess with them. It's your only yeah. entertainment. But, like, the way that people, like, distrust you when you say you don't drink, that's how I feel about people who don't swear. Like, if you're like, oh, goodness golly, me. I'm just like, hmm. Mm. Is, this, <laughs> is this person a murderer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fudge. Fudge sickles. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a niece now, so I've been curbing myself a lot. Uh, my, my nieces and nephews, they cuss like sailors, too. It's cool. It's in the family. Runs in the face. <laughs> I don't know that wedding band thing blew my mind. Uh, I didn't really pay attention, but he's right. I don't think they have their wedding rings on. Hmm. Curious if it's an oversight, a character decision. Well, her fingers are probably swollen from being pregnant. Fairly, that's true. That's a thing. There you go. And waved away just like that. Uh, Malcolm's got no, no prize. Malcolm's got no excuse. He got a tungsten one. If he gets caught in anything, he'll have to cut his finger off. <laughs> Gee, that'll just grow back. That's true, actually. He's probably the primary candidate for those kind of rings. 
<laughs> nah, that's that's good. It's good. Some good letter writing, Sotiris. Good to hear from you, as always. Words put together, periods in the right places, well constructed. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> and a diverse vocabulary. It's good. I like people who are word word conscious. It's nice. It's good. So shall we jump into what we refer to as the meat and potatoes? Yes, we should. No. No, we're going to skip it. Yeah, good, good point. Good call, Craig. Episode over. <laughs> mic drop. Um, Savage uh, Dragon, um, 215. <laughs> Just jump straight into the... That's all, <laughs> folks. So 214. I thought this was a killer comic. This... This is one of the good ones, guys. What the hell just happened? Did you hear that, Raven? <laughs> yeah, his, your bandwidth made you sound drunk. <laughs> you, yeah, you were really slow catching up there. <laughs> yeah, it said, well, the way it sounded, you said, I thought this was a killer comic. <laughs> one of the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are you drinking Ra- now? Raven's on a... Yes, Raven... I'm just drinking your share now as well. Cra- Cra- Craig <laughs> is stuck on a pair of tin cans and strings right now. So if he drops out <laughs> at any point, we'll try to cover. Yeah, yeah. No, it was. This uh, this issue, uh, the person I'm excited to hear from in our esteem... I'm, well, I'm, first of all, let me just say, I'm glad to have two Craig episodes in a row. I love a full-powered fin Oh, cast. I'm blushing. No, thanks for joining Team us. Team Pose! Bro. I'm telling you... Three, the three peak, triple three amigos. But so thanks for joining us. But the other thing is, I just want to say, Jim, this is a pretty angel centric issue. Yeah, I was thinking that the same day. I was like, this is right up Jim's alley. And you know what that means, right? Every (laughs) every time you turn a page, your freighter head's gonna go off. I (laughs) I know she'll be okay. Mm. You say that. You know what comic you're reading. That's yeah, you're right. You're right. I, I don't know. She's awesome. This is a good this is a good one for Angel. I feel like she doesn't get like uh so many awesome like showcase issues. Yeah. Even though she's she's an awesome character. I gotta admit I mean, the thing going on with Malcolm was kind of the the way it was presented was pretty interesting too. Which Oh it's funny. We'll get to. It was hilarious. I, I love it. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just saying I loved his. I thought he was played as like backup comedy, and that was funny. That was great. It was a good issue for Malcolm. Good issue for Angel, and I thought a good issue for Dart. Dart was pretty freaking cool in that, and we'll find out more about that later. But also, we got a showcase was... of a really great villain. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, I can't wait. We'll talk all about it. But I'm just saying, like the villain. Like, okay, I'll be honest. When I saw Tantrum. Like on the cover again, I was like, huh. Uh, he's, just, he's just a big muscly dude, muscly really. Dude. But the way it goes, we'll get to it. But it, I was pleased. I was very pleased. Yeah, this one was really firing and awesome. Yeah. It's, it's got everything I love about Dragon. I gotta, I'm got i not going to lie. I don't really care about Tantrum at all. Even after this Even issue? Even after this issue. I mean, there's an, there's, a, there's an interesting thing at the end, but the actual Tantrum presented here is just like you said it's just a muscle dude and you know it's a crying baby so i mean it, it's not like it's a surprise i don't know I, maybe i'm dumb but it surprised me like i didn't, didn't kind of it's gonna be a baby i kind of figured but i just want to know like how they're made and where they're coming from yeah to me that's all like it's not even so much like that i'm like oh big muscly guy but like the, it's just an interesting, weird thing. Yeah, I mean the entity, the uh, aspect. Had... Can I ask you guys? Yeah, I'm a little embarrassed. I'd like to just you know own up to some ignorance. Okay. What is a baby yorn? A ba- what? Baby Bjorn is like uh, it's one of those things you see like a... people wearing like a backpack that holds a baby oh. while you walk. Like they wear it on the front of them. Yeah, it's the front carrier. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Remember, first time we saw Tantrum, he had a baby on his chest, remember? I'd have said Papoose. Oh. Just kidding. Those are on your back. <laughs> you can put, I think you can wear them both ways. Yeah. But yeah generally, you want to when you see, like, adults walking with, like, a little baby attached to them. <laughs> yeah, generally, they keep them in the front so they don't fall out. Baby Bjorn. Or get stolen. Or When I saw that word, I was like, Baby Bjorn. 
Babyorn? Baby Babyorn is a good villain name. <laughs> Bjork. <laughs> Bjorn. Now, yeah, this this was good. Uh, I just the way, yeah, I liked it. I liked it. And then, then I, the I love the the close ups on uh, Tantrum's face. It looks yeah. so neat. A tiny, tiny it. tongue, no teeth, which was a clue. He's a baby. I didn't. I'm so. I dude. I feel so dumb. It's like Fountainhead. Like, how did I not realize this was a baby? I actually figure it's the same baby that was in Tantrum before. Just for whatever reason it transferred to the baby and bulked it up where before it was in the father and bulked him up. Hmm. At least that was, that's my working theory until I go back and see the discrepancy that I missed. Mm. No, I love, I love the splashes in this issue, man. Oh yeah. That holding the building thing. Yeah. yeah. With the people in the windows. Yeah. And And then it's basically like a couple pages later, there's like a stat almost of the same thing, but the building's crumbling even more. It, it was awesome. I Here's what I liked about that is that, like, you know, we're so used to, like, dumb Malcolm, like, just going in and kicking ass and be like, oops, I killed you. Oops. And, like, this here, you get him, like, he's kind of acting like a police officer. He's like, S- okay, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> it's it's going to be okay. Just, 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 just relax. It was awesome. <laughs> I think I do like that. I think there needs to be a little bit more of that. In fact, kind of how the, the police are used in this issue was kind of interesting. I just kind of wish it would go a little bit further than it did. Yeah, in terms. Cops, it's kind of weird that they're all beat cops. You'd think that in any kind of city, in a universe where superhumans are a thing, you would basically have a what would have potentially be a SWAT unit on call at all times to deal with these things as first responders. Which the which, early issues of Dragon had. Right, which is kind of what Malcolm's role is. You'd think that Dragon or Malcolm would be like, they'd be the, the center of that group within the police department. I don't know, I just think it, it, it they could be differentiated a little bit more from regular cops. You think in like, yeah. SWAT, like SWAT officers versus detectives? And yeah, stuff? and they like, have heavier armament you know, access. I mean... They're all carrying handguns when they're dealing with guys like Tantrum on a regular basis. Yeah, but they're not handguns. They, sh- they right. shoot a little. I mean, we get to that later, and yeah, I thought yeah. That was, I, like... I thought that was an interesting development. Inter- I like freak that. out into shooting police freak out. arsenal. Yeah, I like that. That's actually like a really kind of an awesome like thing. It's a logical progression from what we've seen before. I don't like freak out as a concept, but at least there's a logical progression going on with it. It's cool because. Which... Go ahead, sorry. Well, no, all I was going to say is just it gives the vicious circle and stuff kind of a reason to actually fear the cops. Like, Yeah, just a touch. Yeah, why just a they, little bit. Why wouldn't they just shoot it at him to begin with? Shoot. Well, that's a question. Well, the risk of hitting Malcolm, maybe. Maybe. I mean, remember, it does affect him. He loses his healing factor. Hopefully he's smart enough to have banked more blood by this point. Or yeah, yeah. Of course, he's got three babies that he can, he can just cannibalize if need be. <laughs> <laughs> just pop their top curse style. <laughs> Eat all you want. We'll make more. I like the the scene with Lorella, kind of talking to uh, talking to. Um, oh God, I'm having a brain fart. Maxine. Uh, Maxine. Jesus. Boxing glove, Maxine. Yeah, it, she's it, all padded up, but I, guys, I do like. Hold how, up a guy, minute, guys. You, you, you guys saw that that comic that um, um, Simon. Yeah, Simon made <laughs> with me and you. What's that guy's name? What's that guy's name? Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's every, that is every film cast. Who's that uh, guy? Uh, the um, uh, dragon. <laughs> it's like, damn it. He nailed us. He got us. Oh, bad. <laughs> But I like how they she kind of goes through all of the like scenarios and it really kind of hits home like look you can't really take care of these triplets or whatever not triplets but the three kids. Maxine brings up a really interesting point uh, by basically throwing uh, Lorella's quote unquote crazy religion in her face because I had not actually thought that about that that Lorella might have hangups about chosen ones for that reason. Um, she had dialogue, actually. 
where she was like, I'm thinking of our the future of our race. I, I kind of thought that was more just having more genetic stock to, to vary her, her, her propagation plans. I didn't think it might tie into her race's religious ideals, which is an interesting twist if it goes anywhere. I, I think that's an intentional plot thread. I, I think that's intended to be something that you will now like wonder, you know, what are Lorella's real motives? Obviously she's not going to hurt the kids. I mean, they're chosen ones, but I'm saying like, you know, what, what she really got in the grand scheme, what's she thinking? I will say this. I like Lorella and I like her being in the book. I think she adds an interesting wrinkle to the, di- the, the group dynamic. I could give or take her at this point. I, I want something more to happen, but I want her to be developed more or something. I don't know. Eugenics. I mean, she's got this weird, like, interesting role. Yeah, I mean, she's uh, a, she's a, she in a lot of ways is kind of the, becoming the Rex Dexter. Of yeah, the book because she's the science tech savvy person that is the our our cast of heroes can have access to on a reasonable basis. Yeah, I'm just surprised like there hasn't been any kind of plot where like the U.S. government is going to try to use the Dragon Babies or something like that. But I guess the Dragon Babies aren't super powered or anything. They're just yeah. Although Dart has that idea. Yeah, let's see where this plot this plan goes. Like that's definitely like Dart's uh, idea. I love. Can I just? Um, I think I know what like, you're going to say. Well, no, all I was going to say, I don't want to like babble on too much about it, but like, I think Nikos has been kicking ass on colors lately. Oh yeah. Like, um, for some reason, like this scene where she flips open the door and like the lights like hitting the floor and everything, super pretty. Like, I don't know, like a really good, like, uh, Eric's been kicking ass with the art with this like super scratchy detail and all that stuff. But like the color I think is like jumping up a notch i don't know yeah. maybe i'm wrong well i but... will say early days savage fincast i used to give nikos a lot of crap for his coloring and i definitely think it has improved significantly since those days so i am liking the coloring a lot more what did yeah. you think raven was gonna say oh uh it's dr doom he's dead is a great line oh i don't know you know is that a reference to anything i, I doubt it i just thought i know just... i mean he just named the doctor dr doom in the last issue Okay, I was. I thought it was funny that Doctor Doom, you know, was the name of the Doctor, and that he got killed so quick, you know. But uh, <laughs> I just was making sure I wasn't missing a reference to like, you know, Eric's Spider-Man shit or whatever. Maxine, no. how do you type with boxing gloves on? <laughs> I love. I love her boxing bits. glove, Maxine. I love she, that she just had him on that whole scene. She doesn't want her fingers broken. No, it's good. It's good stuff. Um, um, one thing I sort of lost track of, um, I thought the girls here had Angel's baby with them, but she appears to have disappeared, although the, 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 the kidnapped kids appear to have only ca- kidnapped the two others. So that's correct. It's just Angel's just seems to have vanished from the scene. Oh. I'm not really sure what happened what we're supposed to Where, think there. Did you go back and confirm that? Or I, I, I mean, Barry's got a baby and then rogue warriors got two babies. Does he? That's all. Yeah. Well, that's, that's all weird three. because at the end of the last issue, I could have swore they had angels baby with them when they were talking out in the hallway and that mm-hmm. they only had the two in their hands when they, we got that, that cliffhanger splash. It's only one way to confirm it. We got to go back. Got to go back to the past. Let's see here. Oh my god, this place, guys, I live in just a, like a Ray so, Bradbury. Yeah, there's eating. there's Barry with two, and in the other room. Hmm. Are you going back? You got it? I, yeah, I got it. Uh, I see, well, I guess Malcolm's holding on to her, and then, uh, and then she disappears. I don't know, I guess I'm just confused, because all I see is Barry has two in his hands, and I don't see a third anywhere. Let's see. All right, I got it. Angel's got hers in her hands. All right, there's three little baby like incubators just floating around. Yeah, okay. And then the next page, nobody's holding a baby. Nobody's holding a baby. You're correct. Okay. So it's potentially, and then you flip the last page, and then yeah, Barry's got two. Probably there's I don't know what. 
Geez, now you got me wondering if there's a third, well, like where the third baby is. Yeah, because I don't, well, I don't recall 214. seeing. I don't recall seeing three. it in 214. In 214, no, there's... there's three, and they're loading them in the van. Barry's got one, and Rogue Warrior's got two. Is he holding then, one? I guess it was just. And so then small. later on, later on, Dart's got one, and Barry's holding two. Oh, okay. so yeah, all three babies get kidnapped. Okay. I guess you just at some point they you know put them back, the or Doctor Doom takes them. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Fill in the blanks. It's not super. Yeah, but yeah, all three babies are in play. Man, whoever their informant is is the bomb. Like who's I'm just saying. for? Oh, oh, it's Frankie, the vicious circle informant. It's Frankie. Like, are Who you is sure? that Frank Junior? Yeah, Frank Junior. That's my theory. <laughs> that would suck so much ass. Oh, it would. Like I would be so mad at him. That would be like the worst. He's the only one. <laughs> I can't think of anybody else who could do that, who would know those intimate details, or at least be able to guess at them. Uh, they probably just have someone following Malcolm around. Yeah, I'm sure. I like the design of that weird hospital that that, that Lorella operates. Out I of. think that's. I think it's a basic a real, a real. Oh, yeah, a real Chicago real. hospital. Yeah. Oh, is I, it? I bet. Yeah, I remember a while ago when when uh, we were talking. Uh, Frank Fosco. To Frank, yep. yeah. Going and, around Chicago taking pictures. Yeah, and he's been using that hospital. I forget. Remember the name. when we saw hospital? the bean? The what? <laughs> the bean. The bean. <laughs> it's one of the most Chicago things there is. Yeah, yeah. Don't call it the. Isn't it? Isn't that Hillman Hospital or something? Yeah. Is that what it's called? I think so. I just I like the look. I, I'm just I like that. That's because you know what's funny is I didn't know it was based on a real thing. So it just kind of creates a really like iconic like as soon as you see that structure, you instantly know where you are right. without even a caption. It's like Hillman Hospital, like in the corner. I don't know. It's kind of a nice touch. Just one of those things I appreciate. It's definitely one of the rounder buildings in Chicago. Yeah, it's just got a weird look. <laughs> so, OK, you're a lady in a building getting held up by tantrum. You going to try the front door like that? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Honestly, it's probably a shorter jump than the second floor window. Yeah. I mean, I'm more concerned about the physics involved here because uh, <laughs> he's not exactly in the middle of the building. <laughs> Comic fans, yes. don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> he can't drive. It doesn't make for an awesome shot if he's in the center. <laughs> All hidden away. I do like how Malcolm just picks up the phone. He you know, looks away, looks away from the standoff. Uh, it's, <laughs> not a, it's not a good time. <laughs> and, and then as he's on the phone, he just looks at, I love the panel again with like just the tantrum head, just like, uh, <laughs> this is a full head. You know, it's not really thinking much. Yeah, especially since it's just been standing there with the building over its head. Duh. Duh. Oh, you know, okay. Well, I'll say this when we get to the tantrum reveal. Um, <laughs> cause it's a thought, a good thought, but like, uh, yeah, you got like, uh, Barry getting all like, uh, you know, oh, dart, what do we do? I don't know. This is just some kick-ass angel. This is, the, this is what I'm talking about. This is the kick-ass angel action. It's good. It's good. Like when you talk about like angel being potentially the lead of the book, yeah. like it's kind of hard to swallow until you just remember that like, yeah, angel's a totally awesome ass kicker. Just look at that classic character punching character pose between <laughs> her and rogue warrior i love it i love rogue warrior i love that pose where she's like punching his nipples and he's like missing her head yeah <laughs> total whiff <laughs> yeah rogue warrior is awesome design i mean there's a there's a much better page i think with angel is there it's like after the big splash and she's just totally it's from her from behind and she's just punching rogue warrior it's such a cool pose oh yeah the thum yeah that's what i'm saying like all these angel shots where she's just like super dynamic like kicking his ass mm, it's money well that's the thing is i mean she puts up a really good fight but rogue warrior takes it pretty well he's a lot stronger than i always assumed yeah i didn't know he was such a badass he because she's kind of like one of the more powerful characters in the book, isn't she? Yeah, physically he's strong anyway. Yeah. yeah. There's Very... a, there... Go ahead. No, 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 go. I was going to derail it. Go for it. I was just going to say, this whole episode, this whole issue, 
between the Rogue Warrior Angel fight and the um, Tantrum Malcolm fight, there's so many good panels of like awesome fisticuffs, like so many good Kirby esque like punch scenes. You know what I mean? Panels. Oh, so that, neat. That double page spread where like he's coming all giant fist at the thing with that woman in his hand, like Malcolm. Yeah. After the, the building gets thrown. Oh my god, it's so awesome. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. Yeah. There's another great page too, like of just a full page of just Malcolm and Tantrum, like four panel page, which is cool. Thoom thoom thoom. Choom pow ram. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I figure that if they need permission to break out the freak out, it was probably because they don't resort to it until, like, Malcolm is clearly not kicking this thing's ass. Yeah, between that and then the, the page where Angel jumps after the getaway car. Oh, yeah. That panel where she slugs Rogue Warrior and then grabs the car. It's such a great page. That is awesome where she's, like, grabbing the back end and it's like, that is so... That was... Dude, you're right. That was, like, the most, like, awesome moment where she, like, stops the getaway car. Yeah. It's good. It's kick ass. Man knows his action. Yeah, I want to say I mean, Oops, go ahead. No, I was gonna say it just it feels like we get so many good fight panels throughout this whole comic, but it didn't feel like just a one big kind of fight comic. There was a lot going on. Oh it was, yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah, there's tons of little plot things like uh, Barry here, like having you know a lot more of a conscience than you'd think. Yeah, it's crisis of conscience when Dart stabs a guy in the face. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool. Like even though there's a big fight scene going on, you still have like character moments. All she had and... to do was not kill the guy, and it all would have worked out in the end. Yeah. Well, even had that little thing even going way back to the beginning of the fight scene where Rogue Warrior was like, oh, what are you, crazy? Why are you, like, jumping on the car like that? You know there's babies in here. And she's like, you know, those babies can take anything or whatever. But just to get that dialogue out of Rogue Warrior where he actually has limits, you know? Like, he's just like, it's insane that you're jumping on the car with the kids in it. Yeah, it, it was good. I was like, you know, it's kind of funny that – uh Dart is like one of the most uh, like evil. E- like she's the leader of the vicious circle, and after seeing what a shitty job Flash Mercury did of it, it's kind of awesome to see like you know, Dart is definitely like the most evil. Like <laughs> yeah, she's definitely back to the classic Overlord, kill everyone who displeases me mentality. That seems to work more often than not. It's getting results. Gets results. It's good that whole like getaway car scene and i always like to see the electricity power even when it fails yeah awesome just an awesome visual i wonder how much eric hated scripting this because he hates drawing cars there were a lot of cars in this there were a lot of cars yeah there's a van and car (laughs) and they're all from 1978 (laughs) all wide and squared shit (laughs) they don't use smart cars in chicago craig they don't use smart cars. That's just a golf cart. They don't have any aerodynamic cars. <laughs> They're all bricks with wheels. I like those big blocky ass Larson cars. Like it might bother some people, but to me it's like, yeah, it's just how he draws them. <laughs> just giant blocky cars. I love the page where like right after uh it's the page after Malcolm Zapp's tantrum. Yep. It's where uh Angel and uh, Dart kind of go to face off, and then she just gets hit by behind. Each one of those panels is so dynamic. Just like Dart getting out of the car looks cool as hell. Her getting slammed, uh, Angel getting slammed from behind by Rogue Warrior. And then the last panel where Dart's just kind of leaping towards the reader. It and just... that's where my heart stopped. Bro, I've got even more awesomeness for you that you may not have realized in this sequence. Rogue Warrior tackles Angel from behind. She flips him over her head, like pile driver style, to launch debris at Dart, yep. and Dart cuts the debris in half. That's that. awesome. That's even I, I more. I kind of wish that the big uh, thracoom sound effect wasn't over the debris because I think that kind of reads poorly because of that. 
it did hide the uh, fact I feel a little bit that like like it was like boom she's launching that debris. Yeah, yeah, I kind of missed that until you said that. It kind of makes it more enjoyable to kind of notice that. I didn't realize that Dart was cutting the debris. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. Dart saying that won't even slow me down kind of clued me in, but yeah. didn't read until that point. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. Had she not, and this is my second, third time looking at this, like, so, you know, for me, I've, like, soaked in all this stuff. I've been, like, looking and, like, just really, like, reading the shit out of it. But, like, that's, like, it did not the first time until I read Dart say, that won't even slow me down. I didn't realize the angel was making an effort to, like, launch the debris at her. But isn't that so ninja? Yeah. That's so awesome. Still, though, sliding that sword through the air when those two are so close, you gotta wonder which one's <laughs> gonna get caught by accident. I admit, dude, I was afraid she was gonna get killed, too. I was, well, I was, <laughs> at that point, I was more afraid Rogue Warrior was gonna get cut in two. Me, too. That, I was, isn't, isn't that the beauty of Savage Dragon, though? Like, that we were honestly, like, a little nervous. Like, you know, any everybody. other comic, you're like, oh, you know, Angel won't die, you know, whatever. This won't happen. But with Savage Dragon, you never know. Well, oh, I yeah. think that's why I didn't really didn't like the tantrum fight as much, because that one didn't feel like the, there were any stakes involved. Well, you know, Malcolm is safe-ish, although Eric has said nobody's really safe. Right. But, but you know, you know, the, the tantrum fight, like, Malcolm spelled out, it's stalling Malcolm so he can't go and save Dart or, you know, whoever. Yeah. Because he's being tied up. So I think that makes it even more like Malcolm's not going to be able to jump in and save the day. So is Angel in trouble? Right. The other thing I think is still made his fight interesting is like, you know, Malcolm kills people. So, like, it does kind of make you wonder, like, is he going to, like, kill Tantrum? Of course we know now, you know, that's not the way it went well, or whatever. he certainly but... tried. Yeah, but it, it is cool how it went. Like, even with, even though Malcolm has, like, you know, a greater degree, we'll say, of safety, still, like, if he's fighting a guy, like, he could totally kill that guy. So it's it's always, like, interesting just because of that factor. Like, nobody's really safe, you know? Well, Malcolm was getting pummeled until he stabbed him in the tongue with a dart. Like, if you look at that page, he's just getting pounded. His head is getting pounded into the pavement. And he <laughs> just barely reaches out and grabs a dart and uh, stabs him. So he's a pretty formidable foe. Yeah, that was what uh, I thought was kind of cool about this fight is that it's funny – in this book where Savage Dragon, you know, the main character is always super strong. I just, he's getting his ass kicked. Like it doesn't really, doesn't really afford him an easy win. Right. And it's kind of funny. The, st- the tongue stabbing panel is kind of hilarious. <laughs> the sound stab. effect stab, <laughs> stab right in the tongue. <laughs> it's good. It's good stuff. Oh, Barry, you fucked up, you Barry. You done fucked up, Barry. You had a good thing going. You fucked it up. Good. What What? What? nine-year-old wouldn't want what he had? I, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't see that coming at all. Did you guys see that coming? I, no. I was afraid it was coming because I know how Eric ties up loose ends. Death. <laughs> But I didn't think – I thought he had plans for Barry. And maybe he still does. Maybe this isn't the end. Who knows? Maybe not. Sure. Maybe they're going to stitch him in ha- together and inject him with Malcolm blood. He is super strong just from Battle Axe. So technically, um, we've seen super strong people withstand like Savage Dragon's blood. So, because what was his name? What's a big dude the, during the Dragon Wars? Like he had the blood no problem. Oh, uh... I always forget <laughs> his damn name. I know what oh, it Bludgeon? is. Blood? No, no. Or, All right, here comes another cartoon being made. Braun. Braun. Yeah, yeah. Braun, he, he, yeah. He clearly showed that, like, if you're strong, like, the you know, the blood's not going to be an issue. So technically, really? I Barry... thought he was on whatever that, uh, whatever they were on to let them not explode. Oh, there was a special thing in the mix, wasn't there? Yeah, that they were all, yeah. they all had to take it for the rest of their lives or they'd die. It was like a big sticking point with some of them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, shit, maybe Barry is dead. 
Rest in peace, Barry. That would be pretty hard to recover from getting cut in half like that, but... Well, technically, it's comics, well, let, so. well, let's let's not forget. I believe when Dragon was negated, he get, gets his powers back when he gets a blood injection. So, if Barry was the product of a negated Dragon, could he, is he could could he recover? Ooh, good dragon? point. I good mean, there point. are possibilities here. Yeah, it might not. Well, and again, a third, still yet more mundane possibility is um, the cut so clean. Well, there's real human, <laughs> there's real people in real life who get cut in half and live. So I'm just saying, yeah, you have a shitty life. Like what are you, you have talking a about? Wait, wait, I, I don't. Wait, what? I don't think what? they get cut that in half and live. Yeah. What are you talking about? People See, get like cut. colostomy bags and stuff. Like I'm saying, it's a terrible existence, but uh, cut like that. That's pretty high up. That's like. Let me see. Where is he cut? Middle large intestines. Hmm. It's not the not good. You don't think his, he could live with, like, a shit bag? Stomach and intestines are just cut. I mean, to be fair, technically the god sword should cut things so smooth that there... Honestly, there shouldn't be this much blood. Why? Be- because the god sword cuts it like an atomic... It doesn't, atomic like, solder him. Right, but it's so, like, the body wouldn't even notice it was cut. It was to be so smooth. Do you Wait, think that so would stop You don't think his, like, intestines out? would just fall out with nothing holding it in? Not right away. Not in superhero universe. <laughs> <laughs> You're too tied up on physics, Purcell. That's not. I don't think that matters. <laughs> I don't think that matters. I think. I think it's okay that the blood's out there. Has it been shown to be that way in the past? Yeah. Yeah. Basically. I didn't associate the sword with that level of like swing, and you're just like, uh. Oh. Well, I well the whole thing about the god sword is is that it's magic and it's so sharp that it cuts through anything. So. My assumption has always been that basically just touching the thing will cut you. You don't need to apply like any pressure at all. And so it's just, it's like, it's like swinging nothing and like just cut, cutting through butter, cutting through butter. Can I just say, here's the thing. If you want a testament to how cuckoo bananas that dart really is. Yep. So the whole, like, I love you thing was clearly manipulation. Well, no, she, she says goodbye, my love. I know that's what I'm saying, though, is like there's no reason to keep up the manipulation there. So for her to be like, goodbye, my love. She, she bitch. doesn't abide traitors of any. That bitch crazy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. She's probably got a dragon bun in her oven. <laughs> oh, my God. We completely skipped over the nine year old. Good point. I'm not sure. Do you shoot goo that's, you know, viable well, at he's night? He's half alien. My continuing theory is that his his meta- his body is aging faster than natural. To to hand wave this. To hand wave your sticky goo. Because if he goo. ain't sk- sticky goo in, he ain't getting hard either. He didn't seem to have any trouble with that. You can get a little boner. Little babies get little boners. Oh. <laughs> you ever Craig, wanna, baby- wanna, wanna stop, stop. Back? I'm not talking about this. I'm not you ever changed a baby stopper? <laughs> I'm not talking about this. <laughs> Ask a parent, Jim. I'm You've gone sure. too far. I'm pretty this sure. This podcast is over. <laughs> Apple. <laughs> we'll just be off na, the na, 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 na. So anyway. <laughs> Before we skip, we skip I'm past. So, I'm sort of curious why Freakout would have any effect at all on what appears to be a disembodied entity of fire. That's what's so awesome, dude. Like, what the hell is this thing? Like, what is going on with firearms there? Like, what is its thing? What is its deal? Well, it's tantrum. He, he's like emotion. And he... I'm more curious how that baby got pants. Look at the pants! I love the pants, dude! They're so hilarious! Just like the way they're all like, whoop! Like... Oh, you mean like he changed it to tantrum and then they just put some put, pants, put pants on, on. They're like, you can't go out with your dong hanging out. Let's put some <laughs> supervillain pants on you. Get some pants, you monster. I'm more I'm more wondering if uh, Malcolm jumping through the fire might have been a really bad idea. You know, I was thinking the same thing. Is like, what the hell kind of idea was it to jump through the fire? <laughs> through the obvious possessing fire, yes. Good 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 way good working that out, Malcolm. Clearly not a I detective. I think he thought he was gonna tackle the creature or something, and he just went through it. To me though, it's still insane to do. Like, this thing possesses things. Clearly, possession is what's going on. And you're just like, come here, you. And it's like, dude, you could get possessed. Wouldn't you yeah. think? 
That was a weird scene. I want to know more. I want to know more. My interest is peaked, like, to the peak of Everest. My, uh, I wonder if it's tied to the Mighty One in any way. Is that your theory? That's my working theory. That he's not... Malcolm, early in the issue, Malcolm says, Are you, Dart sicked you on me. My, my working theory is that it just happened to be coincidence. Hmm. Eric throwing us off the trail. I don't know. I really don't know. Right now, the mighty one is the mystical element in the book, but no reason to necessarily assume he's the only mystical thing that could happen. Could just be some random thing. We will see, hopefully. I like the baby. I just like the picture of the cop with the baby. Like, <laughs> hard to believe. Fin- you Fincast 10 years from now. What plot lines would you like to see closed up? What the hell was that tantrum character? <laughs> yeah. It was a seeker. And where'd he get those pants? <laughs> where'd he get those pants? That's all I want to know. This actually, it was funny. This issue was action all the way to the last damn page. Yep. And it didn't feel that way, though. You know? I it felt was, like there was a lot going on. And there, there was. was. There was. You think about really what happened during this all-action issue. There's a ton of stuff. It's good. It's good. It's pretty Uh, crazy how, like, Eric's just been able to keep it going for, like, at least the past year, or I would even dare say since Malcolm took over, how kind of fast-paced and how many crazy turns have kind of gone on and characters killed and, you know, different like real altering things happening to the book. Like Barry might be totally, completely like dead. <laughs> like, I would say it's a pretty good chance. Pretty He's sitting there odds. in a pile of blood cut in, in half. two pieces. I mean, there aren't, know. there aren't a lot of characters in the book that you could even justify that. I mean, Barry's got a few, I mean, there's a few, you know, convoluted ways to, to, to survive that Barry wise. But Eric's generally not the guy who does the convoluted solution. I just don't know. I, I just think it's cleaning house. Until I see him all yeah, standing around. Yeah, got in his ear and said, you're not doing anything with Barry. Get <laughs> rid of him, Eric. <laughs> you think that's how the editorial clean. process goes? Everything clean. <laughs> I, uh. I don't know. I, I think maybe there could still yet be something. You never know. To me, I do believe that he's not one to go in on the whole, like, you know, oh, no, he's dead. Oh, no, he's not. But it's like, you know, this is a pretty resilient type of character. Like, I can't, you can't necessarily, until I see, I tell you, until I see him all standing around in a graveyard. Put his brain in Roughneck's body. <laughs> I think I, it could happen. It could still happen. <laughs> I don't know. Good issue. Angel fan, what do you think? Uh, I was pretty good as an angel fan. She got to punch some things and jump around and be the hero. So, A yes. plus, A number one. I The art was on point. The writing, everything. It's, it's just good. Good issue. Ten out of ten. Sav- the, the savage dragon I care about. Although, I, <laughs> I guess at this point, though, I guess she's the savage Murphy. You know what? It's all good. She's still Angel Dragon to me. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was funny. I just, like I said, I just, uh, it's, I don't know why, but like he was like, yeah, even Angel could carry the book. And I was thinking, would that be as awesome? Yeah, clearly it would. Clearly it would still be as awesome. So if it was an Angel and Maxine book, I would read it. I would. Well, I, I, we would probably read it if it was Barry's book. Nah, fuck that guy. <laughs> I'm out. I would read a tantrum book. <laughs> Wear me get pants today. Purple Hulk. Yes, <laughs> I. You know, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Although clearly something something else going on. But oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Purple Hulk. You know when you say Purple Hulk, when I first saw Tantrum, I thought it was a uh, Rob Liefeld smash. Ah, yes. Remember Did that Smash? ever come out? Uh, I don't think so. I think I think they finally figured out that it was a little bit too close and said, "Nope, let's rethink okay. this." 
So Smash never came out? I don't think so. I, th- I think it was a big brouhaha when it got announced, and then just sort of never happened. How is that any different than, like, Blood Wolf and Lobo? Well, th- there isn't. That That's the point. Or Deadpool, who got a movie and was a total ripoff of, like, Deathstroke the Terminator. Deadpool is such a weird character to have become popular for that exact reason. Hi, I'm Deathstroke the Terminator. <laughs> and, and, he, and, and, of course, Liefeld's Deadpool is <laughs> nothing like that, so what you gonna do? <laughs> oh, well. And he, I'm pretty sure he was named... <laughs> Pretty much, that's uh, it's in the deleted scenes. I'm sure of it. I'm just sure of it. <laughs> I never saw Deadpool. Me either. I didn't either. I I'm not a fan of the character. Me just, either. Me neither. I still got to see uh, Civil War though. We're such haters. This like, <laughs> it's just I you see, see Civil, Civil War. War. I'm excited to see it. I, I haven't seen it yet. Here's but I, the I'm... problem with Deadpool. Anything that Deadpool could do in his own comic, we're already getting in Savage Dragon. Only yeah. more so. Yeah, that's my thing. Is like people are like, "Oh, it's so shocking the things he does," and I'm like, "I guarantee uh, it's not." This, I guarantee this it's not nine year old got me. cut in half. What's Deadpool doing today? Got laid, then got cut in half. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, a midget alien just got laid in Savage Dragon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> On and a pile of bodies. <laughs> girlfriend got cut in half. Seems to be a yeah. recurring motif. No, it's uh, it's funny. That yeah, that, just real quick on Civil War. You know, it's funny. I haven't seen it either, and I won't spoil it. So don't you know worry, dear listeners. Uh, <gasps> both of you, you can keep letting it play. But like, I uh, was telling Buddy, I said, eh, I don't really care about. It. I'm not gonna watch it. And he goes, really, and proceeds to spoil the shit. Oh, what an ass! Uh, he told me everything. Wait a minute. Are you the one who didn't didn't see uh, Winter Soldier? I loved Winter Soldier. Oh, okay. Winter Soldier. The best Metal Gear movie. Yeah, yeah. It's a spy movie. It's just Jason Bourne. Uh, I hate Jason Bourne movies. Apparently you don't, because you liked Winter Soldier. <laughs> Winter Soldier is way better than any of the Bourne movies ever were. It's the same thing. Winter Soldier is my favorite comic book I don't movie. remember Jason Bourne fighting the government with, with, with flying death machines. He, he will. Flying death machines. He will. He doesn't go that far. He's usually just on the run. The Winter Soldier was my favorite, too. Yeah. I mean, out of all of them, it's probably the best, well, like, most well-written. Yeah. And so, like, I'm not going to spoil anything, but he did, like, just tell me the whole thing. And I was like, huh, doesn't sound as good as Winter Soldier. Okay. That's all I'll say. Mm. I, did, I didn't they... really expect it to. Although it is kind of weird that these Captain America movies are just kind of becoming, like, Avengers movies light. Because yeah. Winter Soldier was basically three Avengers, and then this one is all the Avengers except for Thor and Hulk. Dude, that's got to be the Disney fact. It's got to. Because... I don't know. I think it's just because Captain America is a hard sell, so you kind of got to bring these, some of the other characters along to help boost them up. Because remember, first Avenger didn't do very well, and that was a solo cat movie. But do you know what? Like, It's funny because like they did a press thing, and they're like, the new Avengers movie is going to have 56 heroes. Oh, and I'm like, Jesus. who gives a shit? Like, it's not a video. I don't know. It is Infinity War, so I kind of think that's sort of necessary. But aren't they making the next Thor movie, like, with Hulk? Yeah, that's kind of yeah. weird. I'll give you it's that. It's going to be a buddy pick. It's, yeah, but I don't think so. I mean, I think that's the same thing, though. Like, Thor really didn't do that well, right, right. on its own? That makes sense. I don't and think Hulk's so. not but, doing anything right now. He can't carry a solo movie. But I think it's kind of cool that they're doing it. It feels almost like a uh, superhero universe. Well, a big budget kind of like show, TV show. I, I like that. I don't care, you know. Yeah. If you call it Captain America, so I'd rather see more Avengers in it. I, I like seeing new characters and. It's it's too bad that first Avenger is such a tight package. They don't have very many much room to like go back and do like Human Torch and Namor. Do it. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to see them. I don't know. You know what? So, uh, what are, we just talk about the funnies. Let's talk about these funnies. <laughs> I was like, we got way off base. I'm going to lack like a why. Dog comics not so funny. wasn't so funny. No. Nah, Everyone knows hard. dog comics should be about how big the dog is and how un- how 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 annoying large dogs are and how they only <laughs> they eat everything but the raisins. <laughs> Are you are you knocking a Marmaduke? Of course, I'm mocking a Marmaduke. <laughs> He's the only dog that matters in comics. 
I will say uh, I did love the art. I did not love the joke. Yeah, but yeah I, I, I love the art. It's kind of like a really bad joke. Like really bad. Yeah. <laughs> like really bad. Sorry, man. Get a writer. <laughs> I'm not going to pick on it that bad. I'm, I'm just going to say that, like, hey, well, you know, better luck next time. The art was yeah, cool. Yeah. I yeah. like the art. I feel the same way. I like the second. Second one's comic. great. Second one's <laughs> I was actually oh, wondering second. if you were going to like it, Craig, because it's another one of those random ones that you don't jive with all the time. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a take. I guess I have a funny sense of humor or something. I don't know. A weird sense of humor. But <laughs> I thought this one was pretty good. Yeah, that was good. That was hilarious. Um, I liked it a lot. Stanley. <sighs> the Excelsior at the end. <laughs> and his face. <laughs> so that's good. So yeah. I, so yeah. I do like how they called it Cat Pain America. Yeah, or just the derpy look of the like clerk with her eye down like below her mouth. <laughs> Wow, that's a sensual baseline. <laughs> it's, it's so dumb. Hey, dude, is that your mom? I said, is that your mom? <laughs> what? It's perfect. It's it perfect. Is. So, so we no, got that was Savage good. Dragon two fourteen. Yeah, just whew, totally kick ass. I can see it now. Uh, we're gonna name this episode. Baby boners or something like that. No, we won't go that crass. <laughs> King God Dick. <laughs> Wet oh squib. My. Oh, is that cut? I, I think we cut that one. It was cut. Yeah, ironically, you made a reference to it. Did I? You said the Savage Fincast, the show that's not afraid to do it over. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear listeners, the original intro had to be thrown in the trash, I'm afraid. You called it a wet squib. <laughs> it's a bit of a damp squib. Damp squib. I even got it wrong. I'm such an idiot. It's perfect. It was perfect. What's a damp squib? No idea. I'm sure I picked <laughs> it up somewhere. That makes it better. You know, because a squib is, is a that... fake blood pack. Is it? Like in a, it's a, in a Hollywood in a Hollywood movie, when the blood, like, when you shoot someone and you need it to look like oh, blood right. explodes out of their body, that's a squib. So what is a damp squib? I don't know. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. That's usually what I do. Sounds like something you picked up from your, your foreign friend. Yeah. Zach. It does sound foreign. I can hear that rolling off the tongue of it. Oh, it's a bit of a uh, A squib is a miniature explosive device. Right. So damp squib means it just fails to meet expectations. Oh. Off. Was that is that like on a on a um, slang site? Ah, you just type it into Google. It tells you everything. <laughs> it's come into general use to mean anything that fails to meet expectations. Well, that's what I use. It, in. in that's funny. That was perfect use, and yet I've still never heard that. I just learned something new. You learned that the Savage Fincast, where you will pick up strange new vernacular. <laughs> well, shall we take a peek at the future? Let's take a peek at that future, Raven. Savage Dragon 215. The deadly dart, head of the notorious vicious circle, wants young recruits. So she's raiding the nursery and going after the most powerful recruits possible. Dragon babies. Eric Larson brings it. Brings it. The younger the, the younger the better. And then Spawn 263, <laughs> you want you want to do Spawn? Did you do it last I feel like we read that before, yeah, but I, I guess the last, next Yeah, I, I read it last episode, so I, well, well, I would like to hear you read it again. You want me to read it again? I'll read it again. Yeah. Spawn. Sorry. Do <laughs> did you ever get anything on the first try? Nope. I got I, a running start. It's a damp squib. Spawn 263. Demons gone. Angels dead. Our hell spawn now human with new powers. Next time on Spawn Man. Eric Larson brings it. Unless Todd ruins it. 
<laughs> I saw the I saw the cover to it on the Image website. Yeah. And they added a, 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 Bar- a text banner. box. Yeah. No, they added a text box that says "I'm human" or something like that. Really? Have you seen it? Let me. I, just, oh. I thought I just had it up on Comixology. Let me pull it up again. He's saying I'm human. He, he's saying he's I'm human. Two sixty three, huh? Aren't we all? L, aren't we all? I mean, that's a pretty big change for him. Yeah, I don't see the two. I don't see the I'm human. I only see the big bar at the top that says "From Hellspawn to Human." Oh, there you go. Yeah. What? You see yeah. It? Let me check the let me check the image website. Yeah, from from Hellspawn to Human. Yeah. Because if you had like a dialogue balloon that says, "Oh no, I'm human," that'd be <laughs> hilarious. But also is that, kind of tonally weird. Is that how Al Simmons sounds? <laughs> you don't you don't see the dialogue bo- the, uh, the speech bubble? I'm trying to find it. I cannot see it. Find okay. Spawn. I'm on I'm on the image website. This is oh, not yeah. good for good listening. This makes guys. for great radio. Oh yeah, I'm human again. <laughs> No, it's awesome, actually. Yeah, that works. Is, is there still a bar at the top? No, no bar. No, it just says, uh, just type in oh, Spawn okay. 263 in Google. Found it. I'm human again! Wait, no, inflection's wrong. I'm human again! <laughs> well, <laughs> I could see why you would need to keep that secret till after, uh, you know, the... Uh, but it's already on the... It was on the previous solicitation in that bar in the top. Oh, yeah. From Hellspawn to Human. Yeah. Now <laughs> Human with new powers. Or no powers. You know, one of those two. Also, boot, uh, pouches on his leg. And no boot. No no asymmetrical boot. No knife gauntlet. He's, he's a tighter. He's a leaner, meaner spawn. I'm excited to read it. I am, too. I'm I'm stoked. I I don't know. Feeling spawn. Excited for Ant. Can't wait. Wish Eric would just draw the whole fucking universe of superheroes. Draw them all. <laughs> draw them all. Please. Six books. Six books at once. Just get, yeah. just get used to get it. Get Spawn. Get Supreme. <laughs> bring, bring them all in. If I ever win the lottery, I'm just going to like commission Eric just to draw like spinoff books. Oh, that. <laughs> I'm sure he'll, win. he'll love that. Please win the lottery. That's all I'm saying. I will pay for you to draw a Super Patriot ongoing, even if it loses money. It won't matter because you'll have money. <laughs> we'll take care of you. So, yeah, right. that's uh, episode 90, 49 in the can. So, big 50th episode officially next 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 episode. What do you guys think? Five years? Pretty crazy. It's weird. It's crazy to think. I still remember. You know why? Because I still remember. You still I remember still, being a listener. I was do. I was a listener, and I was like, oh, guys, it's so awesome. There's a Savage Dragon fin cast, and they were like, our podcast. I was doing a general topics podcast, just general comic topics podcast. You were? And Yeah, and the guys, they looked at me, and they were like, it was in a comic shop and everything. It was nuts. Me. And they were like, they were like, they didn't last. They were, yeah, they were like Savage Dragon. They were like, that's all they talk about. And I'm like, that's all you need to talk <laughs> I was like, that's all you need to talk about. And they were like, how can you do a podcast on one book? And I was like, I don't know. It kicks ass. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Shut up, you. Man, we, and here we, we are. through some stuff in the in the last five years remember when we were on like what was it image uh what was that site called image addiction image addiction and then became comics addiction and then it went away and that's when we lost like half of our viewers because apparently that gave us a shit ton of exposure that i haven't been able to find again really yeah we we used to draw it a lot more but before they folded weird huh. you know yeah, but we're you... also like you were a part of some other networks, yeah, that's too. Gutter trash. We haven't kept it up. I should... No, but not that. The oh, other one. Right. But that one's kind of... I don't think that gave us very much exposure. It was just kind of a dumping ground of all podcasts, comic-related. 
because you had to like manually put it in there. Yeah, I used to push it a lot, lot more too, but I haven't just been able to put the time into like put it on all the different forum boards like CBR and yeah, I hate Twitter it, though, and stuff. Especially since we've been around so long. Yeah, I'm, I'm I don't gonna... really care. I, I have fun enough. Just I don't care if we had two listeners. I just like talking to you guys about it. It's there's not you know. I mean, that, hard to find other dragon fans like to just sit there and just chat about books. And that, that was always the idea behind it is that this would just kind of be a roundtable discussion like you would have in a comic book shop because, as we all know, only one person buys Savage Dragon at every comic shop. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, do I know that? Every month, do I know that? Yeah. And you look, <laughs> man, it's crazy too because during this time, I've, I transitioned from print to digital. I I don't go to comic shops anymore. <laughs> so you you need to have and then somebody it closed, so I couldn't go if I wanted to. You need to have somebody sass you. Like that needs to be like a sound bite like before you buy Savage Dragon a sound bite needs to play. <laughs> Do you still they still make they that? They still make they... that. That should be a feature Comicsology gives you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> before we started this I don't what what year did we start this in? Be 2011. No, was it? It was 5 years ago. Maybe 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 twenty twelve. So, I could have swore it was yeah, the end of twenty eleven. It was like November, right? Yeah, twenty eleven. It was uh for issue one seventy five mm-hmm. when Dragon had a ray gun on the cover. I thought that'd be a really good time to start because that had come out. It was a big anniversary and an issue of um <sighs> next issue project had come out at the same time. So I thought that was good coordination to talk about have have enough content to talk about. And then Supreme came along, and we always, we always have that's, we that's always funny. have stuff to talk about because there's always something going on. Yeah, that's what's so funny is that like you know when you're following uh, the book of a creator who's so damn prolific, right? He he actually makes more shit than we're able to keep up with very often. Yeah, I mean back in the so, old days we were always talking we got to do retro reviews to fill the time when we have when stuff isn't happening. We did two, literally two retro reviews out of fifty. People still ask for it. They're I know. Like, Are you, we really should do go back to it, but we don't make episodes often enough. I tried to like, and I'm gonna actually when I take my own stuff to black and white, I plan on doing more stuff with like finny sods. Yeah, because I've had I for one I keep such terrible hours that I could actually probably talk to Gavin one day, so that could be a finny sod. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Ask I mean, him who not... he's gonna kill next. <laughs> And then Simon wants to do one, and Scott James said he'd like to talk. And it's like, we have so, we actually have way more that we could be doing than we even yeah. we have. Time. We haven't had a non Eric interview in like two years. We need to do Which it. we used to do it all the time. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's hard too. I mean, some of these you do at once, and it's like, all right, well, we, we hit a lot of them, you know, at once. So it's not like you're going to go back. You know, what are you going to talk about? It's not like these guys are doing continual backups. I mean, Frank was, so we had him a couple of times. Yeah. But for a lot of these other guys, I mean, we, I mean, it wouldn't kill us to have um, Copra, M- uh, Michelle, Michelle Fife back on again. I guess, he, is ton he, really... of, he has done a ton of stuff since the last time we talked to him. Good God. That man. Yeah. yeah. It'd be fun. Just You know he's a Savage Dragon fan. He's still active in the Facebook groups and stuff. So, yeah, just right. you know, ask him how he's feeling about, like, you know, Spawn. And, yeah, there's a million things. That's what's so funny is, like, okay, like, when back when, like, I was first talking to my, like, other friends about, like, this thing, they were like, oh, so limited. There's, like, a billion things you could do with, like, just following Savage Dragon. Like, that's what's so funny. Yeah, it plays <laughs> great. I love it. There's a lot of us, too, that we still haven't touched on. Uh, Chris Burnham, we did the backup for 200. Oh, talked yeah. talked to him a little bit about that. I know he's a Savage Dragon fan. Is Wasn't he involved in that free comic book day comic that's going to have Malcolm in it? Oh, or no? yeah. Or maybe just his characters. In I, it. I assume neither of you got your hands on that either. I ordered it. Yeah, we ordered it on eBay from that post on uh, the Eric Larson fan page on both, Facebook. Both of you did? Hilariously, yeah. like I saw the where you had bought that, and I was like, "Well, so there were ten for sale. I bought one, and Craig bought one. <laughs> so like, you gotta wonder like, you'll have who to else? tell me all about it. I'm gonna hold. It's only five. I'm gonna only, hold to my digital only stance. It's only five smackers, Jim. I know. 
I know. I just don't need more things in my life. What are you, a robot? Things are awesome. <laughs> uh, you know how right, awesome yeah. it's going to be to have that thing? <laughs> <laughs> For like two minutes and you're going to be like, oh, Did it, does, it, my... do it, does every copy come with a sketch cover? Because I saw they had sketch covers. We'll see, I, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like it. I'm going to just draw on mine. Yeah, that's what it's for. <laughs> All right, I heard you kind of starting to sign off, Craig. So <laughs> Yeah, I got to run. All right, let's Sorry. wrap. Then that, that's, uh, that's Savage Fincast episode 49. Thanks for listening, everybody. And here, Thanks, everybody. here's to 50 more-ish, maybe, <laughs> if you're lucky. No promises. <laughs> Thanks for listening, Toodles. guys.